I'm Eric from Lower Hill Meats. <laughs> the chef to butcher story kind of comes where, I think there's two avenues behind it. I think back to like, you know, being excited and knowing how to cook every muscle from an animal or what you would do with something or what are some substitute cuts that you could possibly use. Just different cooking methods, but two, you know, being in the restaurant world and being a chef, really trying to find out, like say you just go to a retail store and you're trying to like buy meat or you're trying to buy food, you know, it's, the cuts aren't always what you want. You look at these cuts and you're like, I don't want to cook that, you know? Or it's like leaving the feather bones on a pork chop or it's like cutting up a sirloin steak, you know, a sirloin steak for instance, this big and it's that thick, like that's not too fun to cook. Us just having that eye as we're cutting, like, you know, we're gonna cut this so that it cooks well also. In a restaurant, the customer sits down and then it's up to you to do start to finish their experience for them. Whereas here, we're just kind of starting that adventure for them. We get them excited about the product. Where did it come from? How are you gonna cook it? How did we cut it? Maybe we cut it to order for you, but then they gotta go home and kind of finish the journey, which is fun. Kind of, I think my whole cooking career, I've gone back and forth. Like, I've worked in a lot of kitchens, I've ran a lot of kitchens, but I've also cut a lot of meat. There's a pretty long run where I'd cut meat in the morning and then I'd cook at night. So I knew I always kind of wanted to bring it together one way or another. Um, wasn't positive how. As you get older, working till midnight, one and two in the morning, gets a little tiring. My wife and I were expecting our son, and she was front of the house manager at a restaurant. I was a chef at a restaurant. We both kind of had our perfect noon to midnight schedule, Tuesday through Saturday, and we're like, what are we doing? Like, you can't hire a nanny to work noon to midnight five days a week. So that's when I fully committed to running the meat market at a local co-op. But then that gave me kind of some time to kind of build up energy to do something like this. But I think I've been in this world long enough that we kind of built enough relationships where I felt it was a suitable time to open this shop too having enough relationships with these farmers that I knew we could do something a little different than some other places. I think there's room for another shop like this in the city too, just because there's enough farmers out there doing really good things. I think my driving force behind owning and running this shop that keeps me coming back every day, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, it's knowing that, you know, I do know where everything's coming from and we are supporting those sources and those farmers. Um, the customers that come in here, you know, whether it's the regulars or it's people coming. We've even had people come in that like, this one woman bought a new pan and she's like, I just bought this pan, what should I cook in it? You know, and it's like, well, let's see. So it, it's pretty fun that way, just seeing what customers actually wanna come in and what they wanna buy. Or, you know, whether they want like a specific sausage. Um, there's this guy that comes in every holiday from Germany and uh, he lives here now, he doesn't come here from Germany. He was in one day and he was just kind of longing for a sausage that he would get in Germany. And I was like, Nuremberger? And he's like, yes, do you know how to make that? I'm like, absolutely. And he's like, let's make it for you. So I'll bet you like, we probably have a half dozen recipes that customers have asked for and that we've either developed or like dusted off and found and made for them. It's fun to see the schedule of people too. So like Saturday morning, Nine o'clock, people are in here for like their whole briskets, their short ribs, their pork shoulders, and that's what they're gonna smoke all day. And then we take custom orders, special orders all the time too. So it's pretty fun to see what people order. Someone calls, they're like, could I get a bone-in skin on full pork belly? You're like, absolutely. Like, <laughs> and I wanna come over. Like. <laughs> for me, working with family farms is really important just in the fact that in this region alone, People kind of think of the Midwest as kind of a food desert. You know, it's, it's not San Francisco, it's not New York, anything like that. But the amount of quality products that we actually do have here is pretty amazing. I, I very comfortably say that like we sell the best beef. Um, it comes from Geneva, Minnesota. We sell the best pork. It comes from either Harmony, Minnesota or Altura, Minnesota, a lot of Southeast Minnesota. And right now, all of our proteins come from Minnesota. You know, I, I think it's really kind of you know, standing our ground and saying like, there's a lot of great food that comes from right here. 
And I think a lot of people overlook that. So between like different meats um, from all the different farmers or whether it's charcuterie from either Red Table or from Underground Meats in Madison, like tons of cheesemakers from around here. Um, we really focus on regionally sourcing everything too and just kind of telling their story. The opposite, a lot of people don't know where anything comes from. They just go ahead and buy it. You know, so for us being able to tell that story and knowing all the farmers, we've been, we've been there, we've visited them, we know the farmers, we can call them. And you know, a good problem that I do have is the amount of farmers that come in here that we meet. And they're like, you know, I'm raising goat, I'm raising lamb, I'm raising hogs. What about Mangalitsa pigs or Red Wattle or Large Blacks or Berkshire? It's like, I don't have a busy enough shop to like work with all these farmers, but I've kind of locked in a certain network of farmers that I really stand by and appreciate what they do, so. Minneapolis is an interesting city where I think a lot of people still really enjoy cooking. You know, they're really seeking out where the product comes from. Like those are kind of the main questions. When people come in and they start looking, it's like, do you make all the sausage in house? You're like, yep. You're like, where does your beef come from? What does it eat? You know, how is it raised? It's not, how much is it? You know, so that's, that's a luxury that we can, that we can have. And I love it. Food and cooking is important. And I think I was fortunate enough where a lot of our, you know, genuine family times were either around the table for holidays or around the table for dinner. That's when your day just kind of unwinds for a little bit, you know, whether it's cooking the food and being able to zone out in the kitchen or catching up with the family for the day. Everybody's so busy these days that, you know, unfortunately food and cooking is kind of an inconvenience that needs to be changed to. This is an experience, this enlightens the day or this finishes the day. And this is, you know, an important part of what we do and where we are and where we come from, you know. Yeah, I grew up in a really small town. I remember going to the the neighborhood butcher shop and that's where you got the meat. It's really fun seeing like the older generations come in here and they're like, oh, I remember this, you know, like I love this and you know, this reminds me of this or this reminds me of my grandpa and I remember going to the butcher shop. So I think it's certainly a nostalgia thing. A reason that we wanted to do this was just to kind of rekindle that, having our back door accessible. People kind of having that old school feel of like, yeah, we can come in the back door. You know, we know the butcher, they know how thick we like our bacon sliced, stuff like that. Like that's the customer service that I think a lot of people are looking for, wanting, but it's kind of lacking in the busy days. I think it does kind of exist in this town. There's another uh, butcher shop, Clancy's and Linden Hills does a really great job of, you know, really telling the story from the source. I worked there for five years, but I also kind of took notes of what I thought was missing. Customers would be wanting a seat to sit down at, or it was a little too crowded in back. You know, customers couldn't always see what was going on. So w us just having the really open production area, but in turn, like hosting classes, whether it's like sausage making classes or butchery classes, there's people that are really looking to learn more about the product and the process. So that's kind of why we're here. Probably talking, cooking with customers, you know, I try to give myself a couple minute timer per interaction and that turns into like 15 or 20 minutes pretty quickly and then I realize that I haven't cut anything all day. <laughs> we kind of joke, there's a barber shop just on the corner, you know, there's a butcher shop here. We just need like a bait shop, like we realize they all start with bees too, but like butcher shops, barber shops, bait shops, bars, everybody comes in just to kind of shoot the shit and like I think it's really fun. You know, people do come in just to talk about food or what they talked about, what they cooked over the weekend. So like customers will text us pictures. It's like, hey, what are you cooking today? Or like they'll buy a whole skin on pork shoulder. You like text us a picture once that's done. So that stuff's super fun. Just seeing what customers actually do or cook or what they made with things, you know, kind of getting that feedback. And I think that's what gets customers coming back too because we, we're excited about what they make. If you look at my typical order guide here, it's pretty boring. It's like two hawks, half a cow, one lamb, 36 chickens, like that's what I get in every week. But from there, what do we do with it? That's the fun part. How do you really use everything? 
what happens to the rest of the animal? Or how can we use the rest of the animal? One of the guys who works here, Dewey, he noticed the amount of bones that we were generating and he went as far as buying a lot of bones from us and selling broths and stocks at the farmer's market for a whole season. So, you know, he went as far as learning our process of what we do, but learning what else he can do with our product too. So that's super fun. You know, our brioche buns that we do, our hamburger buns, um, we use rendered leaf lard. We use pork fat instead of butter for the brioche. So stuff like that. Like, we'll be long on something. It's like, what can we do with this? And you start looking into it that way. Um, we have some pork skin. Let's make cotequino. That's a pork skin sausage. How do you make that? Or, you know, we're always long on livers. Let's make liver mousse. Put that in a jar. People can take that out for picnics. Um, you know, beef tallow. Let's cook with it. Let's buy a fryer and start selling French fries. You're like, okay. So, <laughs> it's fun. It's a cool puzzle to kind of, you know, you take it apart, but you're trying to figure out how to use all the pieces as best you can. I didn't really know that I was going to be selling a lot of burgers and French fries, but whatever. It works. <laughs> so we did the sandwiches in the kitchen from the get-go because we knew we were going to render fats. We knew we were going to make stocks. We knew we were going to, like, need to roast off beef for sandwiches. Um, processing 800 pound steer, you're gonna generate trim and have ground beef. So we have a burger on the menu. We used to do it just on Wednesdays. There's enough of a demand that we do it every day now. So, But that's, that's a fun thing. Like once we started doing burgers every day, you start seeing different people coming in here and they're like, oh, I didn't know you were just a butcher shop. But then you get the other people that come in and they're like, oh, I didn't know you made sandwiches. It's like, whatever you need, you know? <laughs> If you eat lunch slow enough, you'll probably go home with dinner. And that was kind of my goal. Like, I want you to come in for lunch, get a feel for the shop, and figure out, you know, other ingredients that you could take home or cook with, so. Depending on what the weather is, determines how I cut meat for the case. Kind of cut for the weather. You have to, you know. <laughs> you, I'm not gonna put like big old chuck roasts and pork shoulders and everything in there now when it's 80 degrees and sunny outside. So people come in at like six o'clock and they're like, I gotta cook something for on the grill. What can I just throw on the grill? You're like, well, if you have eight hours, I got this pork shoulder. Like if it's a cold and cloudy weekend, you know, sausage sales will get cut in half. It's pretty interesting how seasonal a meat case can be. You know, transitioning from summer into fall. So it's like steaks and sausages, and then Labor Day, and then it's like whole chickens and pork roasts. You know, like everybody goes back to cooking at home. We're fortunate where the case is small enough, we kind of overhaul it, but we kind of cut to fill the case every day. So, you know, it's pretty fun seeing what, you know, you're like, ah, it's kind of a beef short rib, it's kind of a braising day. So, you know, you get like chuck rolls in there or bone-in short ribs, or maybe we'll do some big bone-in cuts, so. Mmm. I'd like to think I do, but I don't know if I do. I like to bike to work all the time, so that clears my head a little bit. I, don't live, I only live like two miles away, at most, probably a mile and a half. So the bike ride's never too bad. The, the thing that gets me geared up for the day is like, making sure I'm here before everyone else, you know, a little extra earlier. Just giving everything kind of a wipe down, a little organization, just kind of getting my bearings on how the shop feels for the day. I think lamb and goat, for sure. Like, beef is really cool because you really have to, you pull apart all these muscles. Um, pork's really great because there's a home for everything. Um, you know, and we make a lot of sausage, so pork. But like, lamb and goat, I think are kind of perfect animals. They're smaller, they're more efficient to cut, you know, if you want to get onto the hippie side of things, like, their impact on the environment. They have a much smaller footprint too, but yeah, they eat so good and there's a ton of flavor. So we alternate lamb and goat. So we kind of force people, we force the lamb people to eat goat. And so, <laughs> and it's good, it's cool. I think it's something that a lot of people aren't used to buying, but you know, statistically goat is the most consumed protein in the world. So somehow it flew over us in beef country, but. <laughs> 